Welcome everyone to Physics 1000, Physics of Everyday Life here at Community College of Rhode Island. I look forward to a great course and with that we'll get started. Our first lecture, we're going to uh, focus on these topics, we're going to introduce physical units, followed by standards of measurement, scientific notation and arithmetic using scientific notation, talking about metric prefixes, and finally, we'll finish with unit conversions. Uh, so, and uh, before we start this, a brief introduction of, of physics. So physics is the study of matter and energy. That's pretty inclusive. Uh, most things in the universe are either matter or energy, so physics has a wide, expansive uh, application. And physics can be um, used to study biology, used to study chemistry, and uh, so its applications aren't bound to physics itself. Um, and so it's, it's really useful knowledge base to have and I, I hope that as this course goes on, you will begin to see the world around you through different eyes. Um, and you're able to make sense of the phenomenon that you observe just in your everyday life uh, and be able to explain why the things that you observe are actually occurring. Uh, I hope that that gives you a greater appreciation for not only physics, but for the natural world and our understanding of how it works. So with that brief introduction, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, as I said, we're gonna start with physical units. So we have physical units to provide consistency when making measurements. Um, in science, we need to make observations, and oftentimes, in making observations, we have to make measurements. Now you can imagine, before we had um, Standardized units, we, we, people would make measurements using more colloquial or anecdotal things. Uh, like, for, for example, the uh, cubit was the distance from the elbow to the fingertips. And so people would report lengths in units of cubits. That's okay, but the problem is, is that a cubit for one person is different for another person. So there's no consistency. So uh, we need units for measurements, but we also need standardized units. So uh, whenever we report the length of something or the mass of something or, or, the, or any other sort of measurement, uh, that is the same, no matter who is making that measurement and where they're making that measurement. So not only are units important, but it's also important to have standardized units. So units, they, they provide some consistency. They provide consistency when making measurements and observations. And so properties, physical properties or quantities that we often measure in science, uh, in general, not just physics, are, so these are common units, including length. So how long something is. Uh, we also have mass. Um, mass is very often confused with weight, how heavy something is. Uh, as we'll learn later on, mass and weight are not the same thing. Mass is a measure of how much matter an object contains. And then we have time. Uh, and there are, there, are, there are several other common units here. There's temperature and, and so forth uh, that we will introduce as we go on throughout the uh, semester. But uh, these are three of the most common, length, mass, and time, uh, especially for this course. Uh, and, and so, but they're, they're, this isn't all of these. There's, there's many other units. And so in science, it's, typical and, and of uh, standard practice to use the SI system. So you're going to use the international system, the SI system of measurement. Okay. 
So there's the imperial or English system, uh, what is used in the United States, that's length is like a, a foot or an inch. Um, time is the same, SI or English, uh, seconds, minutes, hours, days, years, and so forth. Uh, we don't really have units, we do have units for mass in the English system. Uh, that's a slug, but we don't use it very often, we use mostly weight. Uh, and we report mass in units of weight, not in pounds. That's why people often confuse mass with weight, is uh, because we report mass indirectly through weight using the, the uh, English for imperial system. But uh, in the SI system, we use grams or kilograms to, to, uh, to measure mass. That's the, that's the unit of measurement we use to report mass. And so, I'm going to make a little table here of the different units for these uh, standard units for these for these units of measurement. So these are very the common physical units, not all the physical units, but common ones. And we have standardized uh, standards for measuring these units. And so, we're going to look at length, mass, and time. And for the SI system, now a little, uh, like a like subgroup of the SI system is CGS, and I'll explain what that is. And then we have the British Imperial system, that's the, that's the English system. Alright, so the standard unit for length in the SI system is the meter. And that's abbreviated using lowercase m. So CGS, this represents a centimeter gram second units. And so in CGS in the length, the standard is a centimeter. That's abbreviated with lowercase cm. And in the British Imperial, it's the foot, which is ft. For mass in the SI system, the standard is the kilogram, abbreviated lowercase kg. The CGS, that's the g, the gram, and lowercase g. And in the British Imperial system, it's the slug. That's SF. So that probably sounds very unfamiliar to you. Maybe you've heard of slugs before, but slug is a unit of mass in the British Imperial or English system of measurement. And then time, this is the only one that's the same across the board. Uh, it's seconds. That's the standard unit of time in all three. And they're standardized because they are predicated on some objective um, physical quantity. Uh, and, and those are maintained uh, by the um, different uh, scientific institutions uh, in, in Europe, the SI system. Uh, so for example, the meter um, is a length of, is the distance that the speed of light travels, or sorry, light travels in a certain period of time. A kilogram is literally a cylinder uh, that is the prototype of a kilogram. The mass of that cylinder is, is what is defined as a kilogram. And the second is, it's the, you know, the amount of time it takes some isotope of cesium for an electron to go through uh, different, oscillate through different energy states a certain number of time. But, you don't need to know what these standards are based off of. The most important thing to know is that these units, these standardized units, are based off of objective physical um, quantities or not subjective. Uh, what I mean by that is like the length of the cubic, that's subjective. How long is a cubic depends on whose arm you're using, right? 
Well, a meter is a meter, no matter where you are, no matter how, uh, who's measuring it, uh, a meter is a meter, a kilogram is a kilogram, a second is a second. All right, so they are standardized. So uh, we don't have to worry about discrepancies in measurements of these units of length, mass, time, and anything else. So <clears throat> that's physical units and standards of measurement. Now we're going to talk about scientific notation. We use scientific notation whenever we are want to represent quantities that are either very large or very small. So, for example, let's say we had a measurement that was 0 0.0001 meters. So this would be, this is the ones place, so that'd be one meter. This is the tenth place, it'd be one tenth of a meter. A hundredth place, one one hundredth of a meter. A thousandth place, one one thousandth of a meter. And this is the ten thousandth place. So this is one ten thousandth of a meter. All right. So this is equivalent to one divided by ten thousand meters. It's a very very small small distance. It's a very small number, and sometimes it's cumbersome to write. Uh, very small numbers and very large numbers in this in this format, and so we can see that this number here, one ten thousandths of a meter, is equivalent to one divided by ten thousand, and so ten thousand can be rewritten as ten to the to the fourth power. So this is one divided by 10 to the fourth power, because 10,000 is equal to 10 to the fourth power meters. Now if we divide by a number that has an exponent, we can bring that number into the numerator if we change the sign of the exponent. So this is equivalent to 10 to the negative four. So we could rewrite this number as 1 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. Uh, and we probably should include a, a decimal after, 1.0, a decimal place after, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4. So in scientific notation, we write a number with one digit in the ones place. We don't have a digit in the tens place. One digit in the ones place. And we put the, so we place the decimal so that there's only one digit uh, to the left of the decimal that's in the ones place. And we multiply it by a power of 10. And if it's a number smaller than one, the power of 10 is negative. Because remember, a, a negative power means you're dividing by that number. So we're dividing by 10 to the fourth, or dividing by 10,000. And so whenever you divide by a number, you're making it smaller. And if you're making it smaller, you're moving the decimal place to the right, well, to the left, sorry. So one times 10 to the negative four meters. To write this in normal notation, 10 to the negative four means you divide it by 10 Ten, uh, four times. And each time you divide by 10, you move the decimal place one place to the left. For example, 10 divided by 10 is equal to, well, the decimal place starts there, divided by 10, you move it one place to the left, so it's 1.0. So 10 divided by 10 is in fact equal to 1. Where if we do 10 divided by 100, we move the decimal place two places to the left. 
So we get 10 divided by 100 is, is um, 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. So multiplying uh, by a power uh, 10 raised to a negative power means we move the decimal place to the left that number of digits. And so we have So this is a word, it's a one, two, three, four. And so this is this is this number in normal notation, right? So we get back to where we were. And so just to reiterate reiterate, sorry, a multiplying by ten raised to a negative power means we move the decimal place to the left that many uh, digits and it signifies a number that's less than one. So another example, if we want to write a number, so 2.76, uh, actually, let me go in the other direction first. 0 0.00000276 seconds. This is a very small number of seconds. Right? It would be cumbersome to, to have to write this if we're doing you know, some arithmetic uh, with this number. And doing arithmetic with this number is, it would be cumbersome itself, at least by hand. So we can rewrite this in scientific notation. In order to get the decimal place so that there's one digit, one non-zero digit, to the left of the uh, decimal place, we have to move it one, two, three, four, five, six uh, digits to the right. And so this could be written as 2.76 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, maybe six seconds. So this is that number written in scientific notation. Conversely, uh, if we have a number that's in scientific notation, let's say 3.54 times 10 to the negative 5 kilograms, to write that in normal notation, we have to move the decimal place to the left five digits. So here it was. It was one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So this number, 3.54 times 10 to negative 50 kilograms, is equivalent to 0 0.00003540. So that's representing numbers that are much smaller than one using scientific notation. We can also use scientific notation to represent numbers that are much larger than one. Let's say we have that's a large number. We can represent this in scientific notation. Uh, by acknowledging that uh, we write the number with one decimal, one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal place, and so we'll round to two decimal places. And then, by, by how many times we have to multiply this number by 10 to get to this number? What, when we multiply by 10, we're moving the decimal place one place to the right. Remember, whenever we divided by 10, we moved the decimal place one place to the left. So for example, 1 times 10 equals move the decimal place one place to the right, or 1 times 100, move the decimal place two places to the right. right so when we multiply by powers of 10, so this is 100 is 10 to the Second, we move uh, the decimal place to the right, the number of digits that's in the exponent. If there's nothing there, 
uh, it's an inferred one. And this is two, so one times 10 to the three, same as a thousand. So how many times do you have to move the decimal place? To the right here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times 10 to the seven mutes. So this is how we can write a number that's much larger than one in scientific notation. If we had a number like this, we could write it in normal notation by moving, it, now we're gonna move the decimal place five places to the right, so one, two, three, four, Five. All right, so this and uh, this number, number of seconds in scientific notation, you can write it in normal notation by moving the decimal place five places to the right. All right, so that's scientific notation. I'm sure, I'm sure most of you have been exposed at some point in time to scientific notation. Um, now we're just going to do some arithmetic and scientific notation, mainly multiplication and division. So if we have two numbers, let's say 5.0 times 10 to the sixth, and we want to multiply it by, let's say, 3 times 10 to the seventh. The way you multiply numbers in scientific notation is you first multiply the numbers that are being multiplied by 10 raised to the power. So that would be the 5 and the 3. So we multiply those two numbers, and it gives us 15. And then we take the powers of 10, and when you multiply powers of 10, sorry, multiply numbers, you add the exponents whenever you multiply them. So this would be. Six, 10 to the 6 plus 7, right, which is 13. 10 to the 13. So we get 15 times 10 to the 13. Now this isn't in standard scientific notation because there are two digits, non-zero digits, to the left of the decimal place. So we're going to move that digit one place over. And in doing so, we have to add another power of 10 because we moved the decimal place to the left. Uh, so we're going to add another power of 10. So 5 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the 7 is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the new, sorry, to the power of 14. Another example, let's say, Five times ten to the six, and multiply it. We use a, a dot. So if you're confused. By three times ten to the negative negative seven, and we do the same thing. We're just going to add the exponents. But here we're going to notice that we, we add the exponents. We're going to end up with a negative number. So first we multiply the uh, leading numbers. So five times three. That's 15 times 10 to the 6 plus negative 7, which is negative 1. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to move the decimal place one place over. That means we're going to add 1 to the, uh, to the exponent of the 10. So one, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And 10 to the 0, anything raised to the 0 power is just 1. So our answer is just 1.5. Because 10 to the 0 is equal to 1. All right, so multiply, multiplying numbers in scientific notation, you add the exponents. Next, we're going to look at Dividing numbers. Let's say we have 5 times 10 to the 7. I'm going to divide it by um, 2 times 10 
to the eighth. So when dividing, it's similar to multiplying, where you divide the numbers being multiplied by 10 to the power first. So we have 5 divided by 2 times 10. Now we added the exponents when multiplying. When dividing, we subtract the exponents. So it's going to be the exponent in the numerator minus the exponent in the denominator. So 7 minus 8. So 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 times 10 is negative 1. So that's our, that's our answer. Um, and uh, I mean, this number doesn't need to be written in scientific notation. You can write it in normal notation. Remember, exponent to the negative power means we move the decimal place to the left because it's dividing by 10 to, to the 1. So this is the same as 0 0.25. Alright, let me do one more example. 6 times 10 to 9 divided by 3 times 10 to the negative 2. Alright, so we start uh, by dividing the leading numbers multiplied by 10 to a power times 10 to the, and then subtract the exponents. So 9 minus, now this is a negative 2. Right, so if you remember, when you subtract a negative, it's the same, they, they negate each other. So it's, it becomes 9 plus 2. So we have 6 divided by 3, which is 2, times 10 to the 9 plus 2 to the 11. So that's how we divide numbers that are in uh, scientific notation. So, <clears throat> representing quantities that are much smaller than our standard units, say like a meter, kilogram, or second, we can use scientific notation. And representing numbers that are much bigger than our standard units, we can use scientific notation. Another way that we can represent numbers that are much larger, quantities that are much larger or smaller, is using the metric prefixes. And so metric prefixes, they represent powers of 10. So I'm going to create a table here. So we have the prefix. And then the symbol. used for the prefix, and then the factor, the power of 10, that it represents. So they go, they start from 10 to 12, uh, and then 10 to 9, 10 to 6, 10 to the th uh, third, 10 to Ten and then, then smaller times the negative one, ten to the negative two, ten to the negative three, six, nine, and twelve. There's also one negative fifteen um, around the space, but you're going to see. I'm going to highlight which ones we're, we're going to use most often. So 10 to the 12, that is represented by Terra. We're going to use the symbol T. Uh, 10 to the 9th, that's Giga. Use the capital G as the symbol. Ten to the sixth. That's mega. It's capital M. Ten to the third. It's kilo. It's a lowercase k. Ten to the one. Deca. That's a D. 
uh, 10 to the negative 1 is deci. Sorry, uh, that's this is a da, and that's a d. 10 to the negative 2, that's centi, lowercase c. 10 to the negative 3 is, is, um, is milli, is lowercase m. 10 to the negative 6 is micro. We use the Greek letter mu, uh, 10 to the negative 9, nano, lowercase n, 10 to the negative 12 is pico, lowercase p, 10 to the negative 15 is uh, femto, and that's lowercase f. I'm not going to write that, but in this class, what we will use is we will probably encounter some giga all the way down to probably a million. So these are the metric prefixes that we are going to mostly encounter. And so how we use those is let's say we have a number 2.3 times 10 to negative third meters. So this is a length written in scientific notation. But we can see that times 10 to the negative 3, that factor of the base unit, which is meters, it uh, corresponds with the metric prefix milli. So we can write this number and draw it times 10 to negative 3 by using a metric prefix of milli. So this is equivalent to 2.3 millimeters. And so these two quantities are equivalent. This is in units of meters, and this is in units of millimeters. So the metric prefix represents this factor. Uh, for example, a uh, number larger than one, let's say we are 5,624. Um, uh, let's go with unit of power, like, which is a watt. We haven't discussed a watt yet, but a watt is a unit of power. But we could represent this as a smaller number, 5.6, we can maybe round to that digit, and we can call it a kilowatt, right? Because that's the same as 5.6 times 10 to the 3, multiply it by 1,000. Or if we had, say, 5 point, uh, or uh, 5, Six two four zero 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 watts, which we would be the same as five point six two four times ten to the six watts. That could be rewritten as five point six two four. Well, times ten to the six is mega, so that'd be megawatts. My, my, my favorite reference to a metric prefix in pop culture is the amount of power required by the flux capacitor. If you're familiar with Back to the Future, the flux capacitor is what makes time travel possible. Obviously, it's a science fiction movie. But uh, it's 1.21 Gigawatts. Now, uh, Doc Brown in the movie pronounces it gigawatts, which is more of the French pronunciation. We use the, the, the harder G, the, the J, uh, like, like we do with the word giraffe. So, uh, but gigawatts, gigawatts is the same. 
but how much power does the flux capacitor require? 1.21 gigawatts. So that's 1.21 times 10 to the 6 watts. Or we can write it as these are all equivalent, right? 1.21 gigawatts, 1.21 times 10 to the 6 watts, or uh, 1,210,000 watts. All three of these are the same amount of power, right? There's just three different ways of representing it. Standard notation, scientific notation, and using a metric prefix. Okay, and the last topic we'll cover in this lecture is, is unit conversions. So we can, remember we're doing calculations uh, that include physical units. We have to make sure that whenever we're adding or subtracting quantities from each other, they are of the same units. And you can multiply and divide two quantities that are different units, but you can't add and subtract them. So basically, you can only add apples to apples, and you can only subtract apples from apples. So for example, if we had five meters, and we needed to subtract from that another distance or another length, let's say 10 centimeters, we just can't take five minus 10 because they're different units, right? We can't subtract centimeters from meters. What we have to do is we have to convert one of these into the same units as the other. So we can convert centimeters to meters, or we can convert meters to centimeters. And in order to convert meters, we need a conversion. Uh, we convert units, we need a conversion factor. So let's start, let's take five meters and we want to convert it to centimeters. And so the conversion factor for meters to centimeters is for every one meter, there's 100 centimeters. So one meter is the same as 100 centimeters. And so if we take one meter and divide it by 100 centimeters, because one meter is the same as 100 centimeters, this number is equal to one. So we can multiply five meters by this conversion factor and not alter the length because we're ultimately multiplying by one. So we're not going to scale it, make it larger or make it smaller. All we're going to do is convert to units. But we can't multiply by the conversion factor as it is here because we'll see what happens. Five meters times one meter over 100 centimeters we're going to get an answer of 5 divided by 100, which is uh, 0 0.05 units of meters squared per centimeter. That's a, that's a nonsensical answer, right? That's a, what's a meter squared divided by centimeters? Those, those units don't make sense. Um, so we can't multiply 5 meters by the conversion factor as it's written here, what we have to do is multiply it by the reciprocal of this, which is still equal to 1. Because now we see what happens is meters divided by meters cancel out. So we're left with 500 centimeters. So 5 meters multiplied by 100 centimeters per meter yields 500 centimeters in is equivalent to 5 meters. So now we can come up here, we can rewrite this as 500 
centimeters minus 10 centimeters equals 490 centimeters. Now we can do this difference. Conversely, we could have, uh, alternative, alternatively, we could have converted centimeters to meters. To do that, uh, we need a conversion factor from meters to centimeters, which we have. So 10 centimeters multiplied by, now we want to keep it in this form because we want to cancel centimeters and replace with meters. So one meter per 100 centimeters. Centimeters cancel. And we're off with 10 divided by 100, 0 0.1 meters. So 0 0.1 meters. If we rewrite this by meters minus Write this in terms of meters, 0 0.1 meters, we get 4.9 meters. And we can see that these two numbers are equivalent. They are the same length. They represent the same physical quantity, the same length. They're just reported in different units. This one is in meters, so it's 4.9 meters. This one is in centimeters, 490 centimeters. So another uh, example, sometimes we might be giving units in a different system of measurement, like the imperial or English system, and we need to convert it to the, the uh, SI system, or CGS. So for example, let's say we have a length of 70 inches, and we need to convert that to centimeters. How do we do that? Well, we need a conversion factor of how many inches in a centimeter or how many centimeters in an inch. Okay? So, all right, some inches, and then conversion factor is there's 2.54 centimeters for every one inch. Now, why did I write 2.54 centimeters per inch, one inch, and not one inch per 2.54 centimeters, because remember I multiply 70 inches by this conversion factor, which remember is equal to 1, because this length and this length is the same. I want inches to cancel out and we're left with centimeters. So that's why I, I multiply this with centimeters on the, on the numerator and inches in the denominator. And so this, uh, this 70 times 2.54 gives me 177.8, and I'm up with centimeters. So 70 inches is equal to 177.8 centimeters. They're the same physical quantity. They represent the same length, just reported in different units. Right? We converted this length measured in inches to the same length but measured in centimeters. So there's going to be a different number because, because there's 2.54 centimeters for every inch. Okay, so what if we have a, a uh, more complex unit? So, uh, for example, if we have a unit of speed, uh, nine, uh, 95.33 feet per second. So this is speed, and we'll talk about speed in the next lecture, but it's a distance over time. And say if we want to convert that to um, meters per second. Well, the seconds are the same, so you don't have to worry about time, converting time. But we do have to convert feet to meters. So we need a conversion factor.
And so for every one meter, there is 3.281 feet. You're wondering where I get these conversion factors from. Uh, you can look them up in the textbook, or you can look up online, like how many feet are in a meter, and so forth. And so, oh, I multiply 95.33 feet per second by one meter per foot for 3.281 feet. Feet cancel out. I'm left with 95.33 divided by 3.281, and I have meters over seconds because feet cancel out. So I'm going to do this, do this division, and I get 2.906. So 95.33 feet per second. So that speed in units of feet per second is equivalent to 2.906 meters per second. And um, one last thing with, with units, I forgot to mention, Talking about feet per second, feet per second remind me, is we have we have we have base or fundamental units. Uh, those are the, the, the standard units, say meters, kilograms, and seconds. And from them, we can produce derived units. So derived units are units that are a combination of two or more of the base units. So for example, speed is defined by a distance or length traveled over some time interval. And so the units of speed, well the standard unit of distance in, in the SI system is meters and the standard unit of time is seconds. So the standard unit of speed is meters per second. What about uh, density? Well, I'll, I'll do, I'll do um, volume first. So volume is a length um, times the length times the length. So it is a length cubed. And so the standard units of length are meters, so the standard units of volume are meters cubed. And the density is defined by uh, mass per volume. So the standard units of density are the standard units of mass, or kilogram, and volume, which we saw here, is cubic meters. So the standard units of density are kilograms per meter cubed, or cubic meter. And one last example of that, it's one that we are going to look at and use a lot in this class. Um, it's a kilogram times a meter per second squared. So this is mass times length divided by time squared. So there's those three basic units, length, mass, and time. But combined in this way, this is a force. And force is so commonly used that it, it's cumbersome if we want to say, oh, how much force was applied? Five kilograms meters per second squared. Uh, it's a lot to write that all the time. So what we do is kind of package these all together and we call a kilogram meter per second squared, we call that a Newton. 
and that's abbreviated with a capital N. So five kilograms meters per second squared is the same as five newtons. So a newton is an example of a derived unit. A newton is one kilogram meter per second squared. The watt, which is a unit of power, uh, which I used in the uh, metric prefix example, uh, that is a derived unit, right? It comes from, it's, it's just a combination of kilograms, meters, and seconds. Um, and so, so we'll come across a lot of derived units in this course, uh, but they are combinations of those base units. Uh, and we'll see some that include temperature uh, as well as we move throughout the course of the semester. So that concludes the first lecture.